to a stunning upset of the first seed Milwaukee Bucks got me thinking, why were there 29 players? Nah, why were there even two players drafted over Jimmy Buckets? This stone cold assassin who may be the son of Michael Jordan, probably not, and a guy that brings out the best version of himself under the brightest and hottest lights of the NBA. All the close games having to play in, losing the first play in. Why does it say about this team that you were sitting here now having defeated the number one seed, getting ready for national television at Madison Square Garden on Saturday? Don't we play on Sunday? Sunday, I'm sorry. Look at you. Do your job. The 2011 draft was, well, one of the weaker drafts in the 2010s decade, but it did produce a few gems that went to make something special out of their career and change the whole fate of the NBA. To make the story short and sweet, there are only two players that were drafted ahead of Jimmy Butler that I'd say are probably better than Jimmy Butler if we stacked the resume side by side. But the ins and outs, all the stories of some of these players and some groundbreaking decisions made this draft an incredibly interesting one. The Cleveland Cavaliers select Kyrie Irving from Duke University. Perhaps the biggest what if on this entire list is Kyrie Irving, considering some of the strangest circumstances of his career and how one or two missteps might have completely changed his career. Look, Kyrie is a champion, a multiple time all-star and an ASG MVP, the best ball handler of all time and a whole lot in between. But after those six years in Cleveland, Kyrie bounced team after team after team. And though he's shown his brilliance throughout each stop, Kyrie perhaps had two opportunities to create a completely different legacy, I think, to at least be named to the NBA 75th anniversary team. But it's okay, Kyrie, you made my top 75 list. He played three seasons in Cleveland and then mysteriously won it out. Fine, but walking away from a team that made the finals year after year was a highly questionable move. And even with that decision to request a trade out of Cleveland, Kyrie's next stop was Boston. A decorated, hollowed NBA franchise that Kyrie, because he's that good, could have become the next superstar in line for the deep star-studded history of the Boston Celtics. A championship in Boston? Just one championship would have completely brought in a different narrative about Kyrie's career. But Kyrie soured quickly with his teammates in Boston, kind of like he did in Cleveland, and chose to ditch the franchise just after two seasons for the next door neighbors, the Brooklyn Nets. Hey yo, and nothing against my Brooklyn Nets or New Jersey boys, but a legacy in Brooklyn is nothing like a legacy in Boston. Come on, you can't tell me anything different. Oh, and he didn't have any legacy in Brooklyn either. And now he's in Dallas, which, um, he's in Dallas. But he might have already bought a mansion in Los Angeles as he perhaps is preparing to sign with the Lakers this offseason. And he's attending the Lakers first round playoffs. Hey, but what do I know? The Minnesota Timberwolves select Derek Williams from the University of Arizona. Derek Williams lasted about a decade in the NBA, though he bounced from team to team throughout his career. But that's not the prediction most fans would have made when he first stepped foot in the NBA, being touted as arguably a better prospect than Kyrie Irving. Williams made the all-rookie team for the 2011 season and even had a game of 31 points in a win against the Dallas Mavericks. So Timberwolves fans weren't crazy if they thought that Williams would become a nice one-two punch with all-star Kevin Love on the team already. But the Wolves decided to pull the plug on their second overall pick after just two seasons. This was shocking considering that Williams bumped his scoring average by four points in his sophomore season. The Wolves traded him to the Kings and he really just became a journeyman after that with a bag. The Utah Jazz select Ennis Cantor from Istanbul, Turkey and the University of Kentucky. Though Ennis Cantor didn't play at all this season, he has put together a solid pro career having played 13 seasons for five different teams. His best seasons came as a member of the Oklahoma City Thunder when he was already putting up 19 points per game alongside Russell Westbrook and Kevin Durant at just 22 years old. He played briefly with the Knicks and Blazers and had a layover in Boston, as you guys remember, and is now searching for his next NBA team. With a huge caveat after the entire situation going on in Turkey with Cantor, who's taken a stand against human right abuses, he now apparently even has a $500,000 bounty placed on him back home and is even on Turkey's most wanted terrorist list. Kinda crazy if you ask me for an NBA player. The Cleveland Cavaliers select Tristan Thompson from Toronto, Canada and the University of Texas. Double T's NBA career has been nothing to sneeze at. He's played in multiple finals and was among the top rebounders in the NBA for a while and won that historic championship in 2016 with the Cavs. But fans remember his career more because of his run-in with the Kardashians and the supposed Kardashian curse. 
I mean, hey, at least he's reunited with LeBron on the Lakers now, right? And so, like I was saying about that Kardashian curse, actually, let me not get into that right now. That's another video. The Toronto Raptors select Jonas Valanciunas from Mutina, Lithuania. Valanciunas has been just a really solid NBA pro, like really solid. He's averaged a double-double in each of his last five seasons and has scored double digits in points every year of his career outside of his rookie season. But kind of like his draft counterpart Tristan Thompson, fans talk about him in light outside of the game and I'm fully on board with it because it's true. He does look like Travis Kelsey's brother, seriously. The Washington Wizards select Jan Vesely from Ostrava, Czech Republic. Outside of one 16.12 rebound game in his rookie season, I got nothing. The Sacramento Kings select Bismack Biyombo from Lubombashi of the Democratic Republic of Congo. One of those guys who you feel like have been in the NBA for an absolute eternity. I know, he's still just 30 years old and is giving the Phoenix Suns some solid minutes off the bench. Biombo was drafted to probably the worst team to ever exist, not just in the NBA, but maybe in all of sports. I'm dead serious. Those Popcats teams could have lost a game to a junior varsity high school team. But Biombo, give the man his flowers. He's one of the few Congolese Hoopers that actually made it to the NBA and has stuck around for 12 seasons now. The Detroit Pistons select Brandon Knight from the University of Kentucky. Brandon Knight's career is hard to describe. He was super talented, no doubt, averaging nearly 20 points per game for the woeful Phoenix Suns in 2016 at just 24 years old. There's no denying that he was one of those pure bucket getters with a smooth handle. But luck wasn't really on his side, which is ironic considering that he was looking like he would quickly become as good as a scorer as Kyrie for the Cavs. But speaking of Kyrie, the man took Brandon Knight's ankles one night during All-Star Weekend in 2013. And if things couldn't get more embarrassing, DeAndre Jordan chose violence later that year too. Am I being too harsh if I show you this too? Knight, two seconds, one second. Oh, he missed it at the home. I'm sorry, Brandon. I'm sorry. I had to. I had to. Even with the misfortunes, Knight still had the makings of a really solid NBA player, but injuries never stopped bothering him, and he couldn't quite capture the moment he had early in his career after leaving the Suns. He played very briefly for the Dallas Mavericks just two seasons ago. The Charlotte Bobcats select Kemba Walker from the University of Connecticut. We finally see the second All-Star so far in this list after Kyrie Irving. And for a long time, Kemba and Kyrie were in the same ballpark for the top point guards in the NBA and two of the purest scorers at their position. Kemba Walker made the All-Star team four straight years from 2016 to 2020 and had arguably his very best season in 2019 at 28 years old and just entering the heart of his prime. But crazy enough, 2019 was probably the best year of his career and his last truly good year in the NBA. Though he made the All-Star team in 2020, Kemba was hampered by a severe knee injury that season with the Boston Celtics. Keep in mind, Kemba left the Hornets in 2019 as a free agent and was one of the prized free agents on the market that summer. This was just four years ago. But in a more recent story told by his ex-teammate and draft counterpart and his cancer, Kemba was rushed back into play when he wasn't even close to being healthy in that 2020 season. He was signed by the Celtics to help fill the shoes of the newly departed Kyrie Irving, and for a while this looked like a boss move by both Walker and the Celtics. But Kemba played when he wasn't remotely healthy enough to even play and compromised his health moving forward. He played in just 43 games the season after and was subsequently traded to the Knicks where he came off the bench looking like a shell of his former self. He spent this past regular season on the Dallas Mavericks roster. The Milwaukee Bucks select Jimmer Fredette from Brigham Young University. Bro got long range with the strap call him Jimmer. Comment below if you know what song that was from. Only my true fans are gonna know. From being named the National Player of the Year to putting together a super subpar career in the NBA. While Jimmer Fredette wasn't expected to change life in Sacramento like Steph Curry changed it for the Golden States, Jimmer Fredette's shooting ability crashed in his ticket as a lottery pick in the 2011 draft. He played three seasons for the Kings and a season or two for several other teams before leaving the NBA in 2016 to play in China, hmm? where he went on to become the league MVP in the Chinese league. Pretty cool, right? It depends on the type of fan you are. You know, Dylan Brooks might be there too soon. And though he tried making his NBA comeback in 2019, things didn't quite manifest for Fredette, who was continuing his career internationally. The Golden State Warriors select 
Clay Thompson from Washington State University. Just two years after drafting the greatest shooter ever, the Warriors somehow might have drafted someone who might just go down as the second best shooter ever. And the two of them created the greatest backcourt in NBA history. Clay, I mean, what do I need to say about him? He bounced back as well as anyone could after not playing in NBA basketball for nearly three full years after suffering an ACL tear and Achilles tear in consecutive years. Oh, and he still holds the record for most points in a quarter with 37 and the most three-pointers in a single game in the history of the sport with 14 threes. And every time someone brings it up, I attest that Klay Thompson was on his way to having one of the greatest final performances ever had he not gone down that fateful day in Game 6 of the 2019 NBA Finals. He was already around 30 points and would have carried the Dubs to at least a win in that game. But dare I say even another title over the Raptors. The Utah Jazz select Alec Burks from the University of Colorado. There's no denying that Alec Burks was on his way to a super solid NBA career after the potential he displayed for a handful of seasons early in his career on the Utah Jazz. He's always been a reliable three-point shooter, including these last four seasons in which he shot at least 40% from three. At just 22 years old, Burks came off the bench for an upstart Jazz team, put up 14 points per game, and was in the running for the NBA Sixth Man of the Year in 2014. But injuries kept Burks from consistently being available with him playing under 50 games in nine of his last 12 seasons in the NBA. The Phoenix Suns select Markeith Morris. The Houston Rockets select Marcus Morris from the University of Kansas. One of those rare sport moments when Markeith and Marcus Morris were selected in back-to-back -back picks for the Suns and Rockets respectfully. We can argue on and on about which team has had the better career this far, but it's a fact that both these guys have been consistent role players on several winning teams over the years. But it's Mark Keefe who's gotten the upper hand in matchups against his twin brother, going on an 11-7 in 18 games head-to-head, -head, and he has an NBA championship. Something he probably bugs Marcus about all the time because he doesn't have one yet. Maybe soon, though. The Indiana Pacers select Kawhi Leonard from San Diego State University. Something the Indiana Pacers will forever remember is their foolish decision to trade Kawhi Leonard to the Spurs for George freaking Hill. Kawhi's a fun guy with an even better laugh. <laughs> but aside from that, he's a two-time NBA champ and a two-time NBA Finals MVP with his last title coming in that memorable title run in 2019 when Kawhi went absolutely bonkers, averaging 31 points per game, nine rebounds, and four assists as the lone all-star on his team. This, of course, came after Kawhi's career ended abruptly in San Antonio thanks to Zaza Pachulia. But what could have been for Kawhi in San Antonio, right? But then again, he became a Toronto legend in just one season and won that franchise their first title ever. Kawhi had an option, though. And he went on to sign with the Clippers in free agency in 2019 and brought along Paul George to create the next Dynamo team in the NBA. Or so they thought. And four years in, that experiment has stalled out so far. But don't worry, we'll have another video covering that later as well. Kawhi does stay hurt often, but when he plays, he's sickening to watch because he's freaking amazing. Didn't he just score nearly 40 points on the Suns in his first playoff game these past playoffs? He's tough. Okay, maybe not like the most physically tough injury-wise, but still. The Philadelphia 76ers select Nikola Vucevic from Bar Montenegro. Still, Vuce has maintained his ground as one of those criminally underrated bigs in the entire NBA, and that's been his case for a while now. His career began in Orlando as the backup to none other than one of the greatest to ever wear a Magic uniform, Dwight Howard. Albeit, he was the backup for just that one season because Dwight would take his talents to Los Angeles the following summer. Even after starting his first season averaging just 5 points per game, Vooch's career average is a highly respectable 17 points and 10 rebounds per game. Dude's averaging a double-double. But we have to talk about the biggest revelation of his career, his shooting. He came into the league shooting just 52% from the line and not being able to shoot a lick outside of the paint. He was a traditional back-to-the-basket big that would rim run and get his points from three feet from the basket. But that's not all the case today. Nikola Vucevic shot 84% from the line this past regular season on 35% shooting from three, not to mention the 2021 season in which he shot 40% from distance. 
The Magic traded him to the Bulls in 2019 to help clean house and bring in young talent, but Booch only got better in Chicago after career high points average of 23 in 2021. The New York Knicks select Iman Shumpert from Georgia Tech. Yo, does Iman Shumpert still play in the NBA? Shumpert last played on an NBA roster in 2021, but hasn't played any meaningful minutes since he played with the Houston Rockets in 2019. Shumpert was seen as a standout athlete and someone who could jump out of the gym early in his career when he was coming off the bench alongside his good friend J.R. Smith with those Carmelo Anthony-led New York Nick teams. Athletic slashers with sound defense capabilities are still ultra valuable in today's NBA, for example, Gary Payton II. So after Shumpert made the all rookie first team in 2012, it looked like he was going to have a productive and lengthy NBA career. He did, of course, later get traded to the Cavs, where he played a decent role in helping that team win the championship. But after his Cavs stint and his Rockets stint, Iman ran into some strange luck when he signed with the Brooklyn Nets in November of 2019, only to be released a month later in December. And then he signed again with the Nets in January of 2021, only to be released again just a month later. Now, you probably just see Shump on his podcast talking hoops with current and ex-players and his personal stories like the one he recently shared about having to guard Kobe as a rookie. The Washington Wizards select Chris Singleton from Florida State University. The Washington Wizards selected Chris Singleton with the 18th pick in the 2011 draft after he was a McDonald's All-American in 2008 and known for his athleticism. He played just three seasons with Washington before being cut in the offseason of 2014. The Pacers picked him up in September but released him before the start of the new season and he has never played in the NBA since. The Charlotte Bobcats select Tobias Harris from the University of Tennessee. Tobias Harris turned into one of those players who overachieved given their expectations but is seen as a nice player who can be the third or fourth option on a championship contending team. Thankfully enough for him, he was traded on draft day away from the Charlotte Bobcats to play for another mad team, at least they weren't the Bobcats, right? In the Milwaukee Bucks. And to be quite honest with you, the NBA was passing Tobias around. A lot. And I couldn't ever understand why. While he was being traded four times in seven years, Harris became one of the best young scorers in the NBA. Milwaukee gave up on him after two seasons, and he then upped his scoring average to 17 with the Magic and was playing pretty well only to be traded to the Pistons, where he began playing even better, giving you around 18 points per game at still just 24 years old. And you guessed it, then the Pistons sent him to the Clippers, where he turned into a nearly 21 point scorer. For most young players, being involved in trade after trade shatters confidence and never really allows them to find the rhythm or niche in the NBA. Impressively enough, Tobias was playing better and better each time he got traded. The Clippers then sent out Tobias to the Sixers to get a haul of assets in return, and thankfully, Tobias looks like he's found his home. If I just didn't jinx it. Oh, and there was that entire thing about how the Sixers chose Tobias over Jimmy Butler, and Jimmy Butler even said, Tobias Harris over me? Which I thought was highly entertaining, but I'm with Tobias. But if it meant losing Jimmy, eh, I don't know about that. The Minnesota Timberwolves select Donatus Matiunas. The Portland Trailblazers select Nolan Smith. After playing his rookie season overseas, Monte Yunus debuted in the NBA in 2012 as an average bench player for the Houston Rockets. He had his best season in 2015, taking a scoring average up to 12 a game and establishing a respectable three-pointer. He played a couple of seasons in China before briefly coming back to the NBA in 2018, but never played in the NBA past that season. As for Nolan Smith, the Trailblazers took him at 21, but after a couple of down seasons, he was sent down to the D-League, now known the G-League, where he played a season before not being called up ever again to the pros. The Denver Nuggets select Newark, New Jersey's own Kenneth Fareed. Kenneth Fareed's story is super interesting. He was at one point one of the NBA's emerging stars and played in a couple of Rising Stars games at the start of his career. It's why they started calling him the Manimal. Fareed played several seasons in Denver before he progressively started battling with more and more injuries that limited his playing time. And with Nikola Jokic being the prized big man in Denver, in part due to Fareed missing games due to injury, the Nuggets chose to trade him in 2018 after he played in just 32 games. He was last in the NBA in 2019 with the Houston Rockets where he suited up for 25 games, starting in 13. He averaged 12.9 points and 8.2 rebounds. Fareed got less time during Houston's postseason run by his admission, 
I was great in Houston when I got a chance. After just one season, he went to play overseas for a season before eventually coming back to play in the G League. But during his time away from the NBA, something bigger had been brewing for Fareed. For me, it was the depression, is what Fareed said about the ups and downs he had gone through since leaving the NBA in 2019. You go into depression, I went into depression, I had to seek therapy. As of 2023, he's still not giving up on his NBA comeback and is only 34 years old. The Houston Rockets select Nikola Mirotic. You probably remember Mirotic in his fight with his teammate Bobby Portis back in 2017. But Mirotic, both before and after he fractured his jaw that day, was a difference maker for teams. He made the all-rookie NBA team in 2015 and averaged a career-high 16 points per game in 2018, though so injuries here and there kept him from being on the court more consistently as Bulls fans hoped. Even after a super productive season for the Bulls, Bucks, and even the Pelicans, Miritich threw a crazy curveball at the NBA by signing a contract with the European League in the summer of 2019. This is even after the Utah Jazz offered Miritich a three-year, $45 million contract, in which he promptly declined. And ever since that summer, he's continued his career internationally for Real Madrid. The Oklahoma City Thunder select Reggie Jackson from Boston College. Reggie Jackson would have been the fourth piece to the what if OKC Thunder dynasty of KD, Russ, and James Harden because he was a bucket coming off the bench. The Thunder, again, made a super questionable move by trading Reggie in 2015 at the trade deadline to the Detroit Pistons where he immediately became a star, averaging nearly 18 points per game as the number one option. Though Reggie never made an all-star team in Detroit, he was a star in OKC, kind of like what it was with James Harden, was bashed for trading away another gem they found in the draft because Reggie really was that good. The Pistons traded Reggie to the Clippers in 2020, which arguably became the move of the year for the Clippers and made them clear frontrunners for the 2020 title, at least we thought. Without PG-13 and in Kawhi, Reggie showed his pure talent in 2022, scoring 17 a game and leading the Clippers to several clutch late season victories. Though the Clippers recently moved on from Mr. October and sent him to the Nuggets where I believe he'll be a huge difference maker. The Boston Celtics select Marshawn Brooks. The Dallas Mavericks select Jordan Hamilton. The New Jersey Nets select Juwan Johnson. Three picks in a row from 25 through 27 were duds. Juwan Johnson never played more than 36 games in the NBA. Jordan Hamilton had potential as someone who was a capable scorer, but he last played in the NBA in 2016 for the Pelicans, and Marshawn Brooks, his career looked super promising after making the all-rookie team in 2012 for the then New Jersey Nets, but he never was even close to the player he was after one year for whatever reason. And it's worth mentioning that weird seven-game stretch in 2017 to start the season when Brooks averaged 20 points per game, but then fell off a cliff. The Chicago Bulls select Norris Cole. Norris Cole was selected by the Bulls, but we all remember him from his days with the Miami Big Three Heat at the start of the 2010s decade. Despite coming from a small school, Cole got a lot of attention for his play at Cleveland State. His dominance as a senior was got him his recognition. He led the Horizon League in scoring with 21.7 points per game his senior year and also led the league in steals with 2.2 per game and free throw percentage. Cole then played for the Pelicans in 2015 through 2016 and averaged career highs in 10.6 points per game, 3.7 assists per game, and 3.4 rebounds per game. Despite these super solid numbers, Cole played in the Chinese Basketball Association in 2016 and even signed a contract with the Thunder in February of 2017. He played for them for a little bit in the playoffs that season too, however he has not played in the NBA since and is still playing overseas. The San Antonio Spurs select Corey Joseph. Corey Joseph has been a solid pro since day one in the NBA. He's played for San Antonio and won that 2014 championship against the Heat. He's played some for Toronto, Sacramento, Indiana, and now Detroit. He stayed injury prone in the last few seasons compared to his earlier seasons, but any team can benefit from Corey Joseph's experience and savviness off the bench. Oh, and you guys know he was a problem on NBA 2K back in the day, or maybe that's just me. So, how does the 2011 draft class stack up with other drafts in the 2010s decade? I know I opened up the video saying it was one of the weaker drafts in the 2010s decade, but now that I'm looking at it, it really wasn't. A couple of different draft picks here and there would have changed a lot for the NBA history considering this was only the second draft starting the 2010s decade. You had Kawhi, the best player of this draft, 
at number 15. Guys like Derek Williams and Jan Vesely were in the top 10, while Klay Thompson fell to 11. And Jimmy Butler fell to the last pick of the first round, only coming into the NBA as a great defender with a lot of athleticism. But man, has that changed today. How different would Jimmy's career have been if he was drafted in the top 15? Comment below.